Another example. In the American civilization model, we study winners. In the elite culture model, we focus on losers. Now, I'll give you, a, again, if you wanted to have for, like for a schoolroom, if you were teaching a course and had, had the time to do it, go look at the sports page for any four days, and then go look at the front page. Look at the extraordinary cultural difference. Sports pages are about winning. Interview with the best coach. Interview with the most successful player. Interview with the Heisman Trophy winner. What does it take to be a winner? You know, if the, front, if the sports page was like the front page, interview with the worst coach in America, the trauma of never winning, the psychological sense of loneliness of the long-time long loser, the victimization of the weakest team in the league. I mean, literally, take, take the two sets of articles, put them up side by side, and look at the code words in the analytical framework. The front page is about losing, and the focus is on victims. The sports page is about winning, and the focus is on success. And it's a radical difference. Now, the, only di the other difference, of course, is that the sports page is also about hometown teams who you're loyal to no matter what they're doing. But then it's the loyalty that's the reward. These are our guys, or these are our girls. These, are, these folks are out there, you know, who cares? As long as it's our hometown high school team, we're rooting for them no matter. But that's good, too, because it teaches a different set of strengths, which is bonding and, and loyalty and a sense of togetherness. And then apply that to the way we treat city government. I, had, I talked this week with a guy in a major city, as a major manufacturer, who'd been working to help his city and finally got so mad he went to the local newspaper, saw the publisher and said, why are you doing more each morning to destroy the city than I'm able to do to rebuild it? And he's now been asked to join the board of the newspaper because they were so shaken as he took them through story after story which focused on the negative. Let me give you another example. The American Civilization Strategy would review and encourage success whereas the elite culture strategy restricts, undermines, and takes from success to give to losers. So when we hear talk about class warfare, taxing the rich, just think about the psychological implications behind that kind of, of rhetoric. Now, I get one that's really controversial. The American civilization model would award for merit. The elite culture would, would award based on quotas. We want to know, what have you achieved? They want to know, who is your grandmother? That, by the way, is one of the most powerful cultural problems in American civilization. Which matters? Do you matter, or does your group matter? Does your future matter and your effort matter, or does your past matter? Because remember, if you reward somebody, you punish somebody else. So you're now using the state to pick winners and losers based on a particular formula which has nothing to do with you as an individual. It's a very profound question about the nature of America and very antithetical to American civilization's core values. Another example, at the projects level. I'm going to talk briefly about earning by learning versus applying for a set aside. We designed earning by learning about seven years ago at West Georgia College with Dr. Mel Steely. We go into public housing projects for second and third graders. We pay them $2 a book for every book they read in the summertime. And we lay out a framework. With, we use adult volunteers in public libraries. Now, if, if I can here for a second, notice the model. Uh, we're talking here about a system which is remarkably thin and non-bureaucratic and is truly voluntary. That is, it's voluntary at two levels. It's voluntary, first of all, because the money is not coerced from you by the government. I used the term this week, coercive volunteerism. And my reference was to the fact that if you don't like a particular government program and you decide you won't volunteer, that is, the IRS calls and says, hi, we'd like you to volunteer to pay for this program. And you say, well, I think I just won't volunteer this year. What happens to you? They take it anyway, right? I mean, first the IRS visits, then the U.S. Marshal visits, then we visit you. <laughs> I mean, is that not right? I mean, I'm, I, look, part, part of what I'm trying to do, I know it gets me in trouble sometimes with the elite media, but part of what I'm trying to do here is cut down through all the baloney to get to the core underlying realities. Because we have so many layers of garbage words that have no meaning. You remember last year one of the phrases for tax increase was contribution. <laughs> now that can only make sense in a culture in which words live in, and I'm a very big fan, if you've never read it, of George Orwell's uh, work on politics in the English language. It's a short essay, the essence of which is words have meaning. 
And when I read it, I was just, I read it 15 years ago, I was just blown apart by it because I suddenly realized, if you're going to talk about volunteers, they should actually volunteer. If they're being paid, they're not volunteers, not in the classic sense. They're government employees. If, if, if you're being paid with a charitable contribution, it's a voluntary donation. If you're being paid with government money, it was coerced from someone. It's the nature of government. Government, in fact, there's a quote from Washington, that government is about power. And so you better think through the power you're giving somebody else to say to you, you will give me this money. Now what we do with earning by learning is very simple and very different from the welfare state model. First of all, we use volunteer adults. No money. Second, we use public libraries. That's why they're there. No money. Third, we use free space in the public housing common room. So the overhead is totally volunteer. The entire structure is totally volunteer. The only money goes to the kids. So if you have $1,000, you can pay for $2 a book, you can pay for 500 books. Whereas in the welfare state model, if you have $1,000, you pay $850 of it for the bureaucracy. Totally different model. But there's a second part. It is incentive driven. That is, if you read 20 books, you get $40. Why are you reading the books? Because you'll get a reward. And I have people who say to me, oh, it's terrible, you have to, to pay them. These are little kids who watch baseball players on strike. They watch rock stars make millions. They read about congressmen getting four and a half million dollar book advances. <laughs> You can't take all this stuff too seriously. And then we turn to them and say, oh, but you shouldn't really think about this. What nonsense. I mean, we live in a society where the only way they can make money right now is to be a pimp, a prostitute, or a drug dealer. It's illegal to go to work. They want some cash. They live, in a, they live by definition in a public housing project. Nobody around them reads. They have a broken home. Nobody's there nurturing them. And we walk in and we say, hi, we'll actually give you the money if you'll earn it. Because now it's your money. Then they get to spend it. Most of them, we've done it for seven years in 17 different states by now, most of them spend it on clothing. But the important thing is it's theirs by right because they've earned it. So we're teaching them to earn. And we're teaching them that honest work leads to honest pay. And we're connecting them with an adult who cares which may be the first adult they've ever seen who cares. We had one young child in Jonesboro, Georgia, who had very, very bad uh, teeth deformation, who was our best reader that year. He was in the fifth grade. We let him in because he was so lonely and so isolated that they made the local voluntary decision to let him in and break the rules. At the end of the summer, two orthodontists took him under their care and gave him two years of free care and changed his entire life. All of it done for free. 